Welcome to the panel discussion, uh, new, waves, new Ways of Audience Participation in Music here at the new SAE Vienna Institute at the Waves Festival. I'm Oliver Hödel uh, from the University of Vienna and uh, we study new ways of audience participation at university in various ways. And we are really glad to have four expert from, experts from four very different areas actually here uh, that all have music more or less in common to some extent. Um, I will start to introduce the four experts briefly uh, from left to right maybe. Uh, first on the left, Professor Peter Reichel, uh, professor for computer science at the University of Vienna, studied mathematics, physics, computer science and philosophy. And his current work focuses on digital transformation aspects uh, that cover ethics, cultural, societal aspects and so on. And he's also an active pianist and repetitor uh, specializing in opera music uh, in the 19th century bel canto tradition. Uh, next is Electric Indigo. Uh, she's a DJ and composer and music musician from Vienna. Uh, she interprets independent and intelligent ways of techno and electronic music. Please correct me if I was wrong afterwards. Uh, and um, she's very important here because she is the link to our research project which uh, builds the foundation of, of all our research uh, which we had a couple of years ago so she, she was an artist during our uh, performances that studied audience participation in music and uh, she released her album, a new album uh, Ferrum in March 2020 uh, yeah, so. Next is Susanna Niedermeyer. Uh, she studied fine arts and political sciences. And uh, she's working as an editor, presenter, and web designer and curator for the ORF, the Austrian Broadcasting Station uh, in Ö1 and FM4. And since 2007, she co curated uh, the ORF Festival Music Protocol im Steirischen Herbst, uh, the uh, big music festival. And since 2008, she is co-producer of the radio series ORF Ö1 Zeitton, uh, which is about contemporary music. Yeah, and finally, uh, we have Christopher Wiedauer. Um, he, since 2013, until two weeks ago, he was head of digital development at the Wiener Staatsoper and was responsible for uh, streaming, production and streaming, and uh, as far as I understood, mainly responsible for digital music scores and inventing uh, musical digital music scores at the opera. Uh, he studied uh, philosophy in Salzburg and music management and was intendant, uh, intendant, I don't know, hopefully, uh, at the Styriate Graz. So, it's glad that we have two links to Graz, and I was born in Bruck, and I'm a Styrian, so it's good. Um, yeah, and from 2010 to 2013, uh, he was in the city. He was in the bureau of in the office of the city councillor in charge of cultural affairs in Vienna. Um, yeah, so we have a, a broad range of, of different views on music, um, and. To be honest, when we started to think about this panel and the title and what we were talking about, we didn't know that everything will change within the last months and especially from March 2020. Uh, so we want to, to use this as a chance and, and now start to reflect on, uh, and especially the four different perspectives um, from broadcast over performing arts to uh, computer science and as a consumer. Uh, Professor Reichel is an enthusiastic opera visitor and of course from production. I so uh, <laughs> so the, the, first, the first question, and maybe let's do this as the first round. Uh, what, what did 
what 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 changed uh, your your um, your view and your consuming way of music uh, as uh, yeah how how do you think that that changed through since March 2020 when everything shifted from physical to online music so uh, concerts were streamed online and you were basically especially in the in the deepest lockdown phase you were watching uh, the camera and no one was mainly responding so that that was the first the first question how did that change audience participation from your point of view well, that's a very difficult question because um, personally i have to admit i don't think i ever saw any streaming performance during this time or anything like that, because I'm married to an opera singer and we just used the time to make music ourselves and study new roles. And uh, so we were much more active, in fact, ourselves than, than consuming, um, which is interesting, but that's just how it is in my, in, in my case. Um, the problem, of course, is uh, that uh, for, the, for the active musicians, uh, this has been a, a desperate time because they simply, they couldn't, do any performances, and uh, if I understood correctly, in, in the UK, two out of three have decided to stop their profession and things like that, so this, this is a disaster. Um, and um, we, we, we really have to think about ways how to sort of retransform the, the type of, uh, of audience we have now, again, into an active audience, which, which will be a major task in the future. But for me personally, it's, I just stopped consuming music. Uh, Susanne, Susanne? Yeah, um, there were different aspects which are quite obvious on the one hand, and uh, some of them I find really interesting. Um, the very first performance I had after the start of the lockdown was actually for uh, United We Stream. By coincidence, I stayed six weeks in Berlin from March on, and um, there the United We Stream project started, which was, uh, I don't know if you're all familiar with it, but it started as a cooperation between Berlin clubs and Arte concert, uh, TV, TV station and broadcasting station um, to support the clubs that um, suffered, of course, severely under the lockdown and, and the lack of um, audience um, at their locations. So uh, I was invited to play for Suicide Club, uh, which I'm, I've been more or less a resident uh, since 1993 or so. And uh, that felt like a very, like much like a liberation, like a time off from this like weird, uh, exceptional time. And uh, I did not, even noticed so much that there were not, that the club was empty. Of course, I noticed that the club was empty, but while I was playing, I was so happy to hear the music in a, in a loud and proper way and not on my headphones or in little laptop speakers or home listening environment that I, I got, I was totally enthusiastic and super happy with playing for United We Stream. Later on, I, I, I tried to follow like other colleagues and, and other concerts and live streams, and it quickly became way too much. I was totally overwhelmed with uh, the possibilities. I could have stayed online and, and uh, watch and listen for 24-7. Uh, and uh, so I distanced myself again from all these like streams popping up here and there. And then in the, in the past couple of months, I actually got involved again in a different form of uh, virtual club. Um, and I, I find it, I'm, now I'm, I'm really like super like enthusiastic again about it. Um, it's a virtual club called Common and it is part of a toolkit uh, that uh, is run by a few um, people, relatively young and very tech-savvy people from 
around the world almost. Um, uh, that project is called Currents FM. It's a streaming platform, but not only. It's more like a, a visionary community kind of interconnecting mega project. And Common is one part of it, and that's a virtual club uh, that has actually audience participation in the form of um, chat rooms for now. And there are several levels of participation that you can support the artists who play, that you can engage in a chat room, um, that you can even enter some sort of green room where you can video chat. And they are constantly trying out new approaches and new techniques. And I find that pretty rewarding and um, it could be some sort of tool that we can use in the future after Corona and COVID-19 in addition to physical meetings and physical festivals. May I just ask here, what was the feedback through these uh, chat rooms? Or because usually during your concerts, you, you do not give verbal feedback, I guess. Uh, and uh, so, as you said, this is a new a new form. And what was the feedback, the quality of the feedback uh, in this virtual club? Uh, the thing is that most of the artists actually did not stream live, but pre-recorded their sets. So the artists were present themselves. <laughs> and you could uh, interact with the artists and ask them, um, hey, uh, what's a track or where does it come from? So you could get more information about the context of the music or the art that was being presented. Um, and it was really nice to just see your friends or acquaintances popping up there in the chat room and you could just, you know, share your um, enjoyment and um, it's still on a, on a relatively small level, the whole thing, because it only happened three times now, so it's new, um, but I think it it can grow and the artists actually like it too and FEMA Pressures, which is a network that I founded, um, curates a room within common and the, f the feedback from within our network from the artists has been like really good. They enjoyed it and we do a mixture of talks and presentations and concerts and DJ sets. So it's it's more open than the regular club space or concert space. Thank you. Uh, in, in broadcasting, y usually, uh, whether it's radio or, or, or TV, you don't get a lot of immediate feedback uh, because in the, in the traditional broadcast, there is no feedback channel, let's say. Uh, so you're, I don't know if, if one can say that you're used to, to uh, make your, your broadcasts without getting immediate feedback like uh, even less feedback, like no feedback, uh, because uh, live music gets some feedback from the audience. Um, but how how do you? I, I would say let's 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 think what, what from your from your broadcasting perspective. Uh, what are the feedback channels uh, from the audience that you already had, let's say, and did that changed for you during during Corona? Actually, um, in that perspective, not really anything changed. I mean, what really changed dramatically was the way of producing radio shows because we were all sitting back home in our uh, living rooms and, and bedrooms and uh, producing like the whole broadcasts you heard on Ö1 basically at home. Um, we had a lot of uh, communication via email and telephone with our colleagues, but we didn't see each other. So in that respect, uh, the situation was very different and also, of course, it generated much more work. So uh, I was quite busy in the first couple of weeks with like getting all the broadcasts done, which were scheduled. Um, it's, it's right, we usually, we are used to not getting a lot of feedback. So uh, we are speaking to this like big audience and uh, once in a while, yeah, we hear something actually mostly over musicians. If we do portraits about musicians, then it's the musicians which uh, tell us then, you know, I, so many people contacted me and, and congratulated me to my work. And so that's 
the main feedback. And of course, we also have the telephone line where everybody can call. And uh, yeah, as we are the broadcasting series for new and experimental music, I mean, we do get comments like, do you really have to broadcast this at all? So sometimes we get these comments. Um, but um, maybe what is like more interesting, I mean, for, for me, of course, the situation uh, besides that I was super busy and couldn't follow everything, it was of course interesting to see how does the scene react, how do people react, and if you talk about the virtual club, I had to think about Echo Räume at Klingt.org, because I think it's a very similar model, uh, although on a very local um, base, I would say, not so much like uh, with this like international outlook, but it's also like um, there were a couple of musicians uh, from the platform Klingt.org, which some of you might know, uh, who were immediately setting up uh, something like that, a place where to meet with like uh, the possibility to stream, uh, they were like integrating basically everybody I think who was interested, people were sending their uh, their pre-produced sets, others were doing things live. They also had like a couple of chat rooms, or they still do actually, so they are still doing it. Um, so that was pretty impressive, I think. Um, yeah, uh, so that was the, the, the one layer. On the second layer, I must say that I personally really missed the physical experience as an audience member. So for me, like the streaming model is definitely not enough. Uh, it was more like, uh, it more hurts, you know, if you, if you watch something uh, like from United We Stream and actually I was like really missing the club, you know. So for me, it's, uh, I mean, of course it does make sense from different points of view. It's a way also to generate maybe some income and, and, and keep the thing running, so to see. Uh, so to say, but uh, from like as an audience member, from the um, experience which I get, uh, it it more showed me what was lacking than it than it was rewarding. So um, that's a different layer. And then of course we are having our own festival. So so uh, it's right that's like producing radio shows. It's my main job, but we also have our own festival, which is coming up uh, beginning of October. So of course we were also like super busy thinking, how can we do it? Like everybody who is doing events these days. And uh, yeah, I guess we will speak about it later. So that was like the, the third level. Um, I mean, I also do see chances in this, like um, when you were mentioning Comma, for example, at the moment there is the Mutek festival taking place in Montreal, uh, which is like a for North America, a pretty big festival for electronic um, music and media arts. And they, for example, now have like this platform on swap cards uh, for professionals mainly. So, but I think everybody who wants to be a professional and, and pays a little amount of money can be part of that. Uh, where they have like a, a whole series of talks and, and um, people, uh, like so many people already connected me and want to chat with me and want to exchange information. So I think that is like a, a really nice thing, which I also think that would be worth to keep uh, for afterwards. Because suddenly, I mean, yeah, when it comes to the performances, they're also presenting lots of performances online. So there I'm like, I mean, sometimes even as a journalist, it's maybe practical, you know, you can get a quick glimpse of what is it. Um, but yeah, it's not like the, the rewarding, full rewarding experience. But like uh, in connecting people, for example, on this like more theoretical level, on this more discourse level, I think it definitely makes sense to, to, yeah, to keep that. But I think this is what will happen anyways. Yeah. Uh, just as maybe a simple technical question, okay. from a broadcasting station, I would expect that studios are important to produce good quality. Uh, yeah, I mean, how, how did that mm -hmm. change when you had to go to home office? I mean, yeah, it's or, interesting or more, question. more provocatively okay. spoken, okay. Uh, if you can do that at home, okay. why do you need studios? Okay. <laughs> yes, I mean, of course, the quality was a different one, uh, which was, I can give a short example, a uh, small example. Um, for example, if I record 
the moderation by myself with my little recording device and the microphone I have. Uh, of course, it doesn't sound as good as if I would go to the studio. So sometimes if I had like um, speakers, you know, because of course at the ORF we still had like a basic crew working and, and for example, if you use English quotes, then you, we are over voicing everything. So I could send to my colleagues like the text so that they read it and send it back to me. Um, and, and that was then quite funny because like they sounded so much better than me. <laughs> so I had uh, always like a lot of work to leveling everything out. Um, yeah, and we were definitely all, we couldn't wait to get back to the studios again. Uh, also, it's much more work and I'm not a technician. I mean, I can do all those things, but we have specialized, uh, specialists for that. So yeah, we are back in the studios now. I mean, we are still 50-50 working in our home offices, but uh, when it comes to producing, we are back since May, I think it was, or June. Yeah. End of May, I think, yeah. 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 Thank you, yeah. Uh, Christopher, you just told me uh, in, the, in the lobby that the streaming of the Staatsoper increased about 10 times or, or even more. Uh, so I guess from that perspective, you're a great winner <laughs> of the lockdown and that everybody was locked in at home and couldn't visit the opera anymore. Uh, what is your perspective on that? Yes, I mean, yeah, uh, uh, the the investment in that in that system and investment in in, in uh, building an own platform, an independent platform, and being able to to just push the button and do what we wanted, paid off. Of course, I mean, it. Uh, we 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 do this. Uh, we did this. So it's it's. I, I, I'm still. It's um, just let me say we, <laughs> even if it's not a we anymore. Um, so we did. Uh, we launched this whole system in 2013. From 2014 on, we did a regular program, and uh, uh, this program was quite successful, I would say, in many different many different uh, aspects. One was uh, selling live streams to people all over the world. Um, when when the lockdown um, happened, uh, it took us only two days or three days to relaunch uh, a, an opera season day by day by day, 109 days from, from March 15 to June 30th, um, streaming from the archive. And of course, in that moment, uh, we, uh, since, since March 15, we did it for free because it was the only thing that we could give our public. And not only our public, also our sponsors, for example. So it's, um, the house was closed. Uh, it was a weird working place at that time, the first month maybe, five weeks, because often I was the only person in the house, maybe two, in this huge, huge, huge house, uh, because nobody um, uh, worked in the house. Um, it was not allowed, uh, but, but we had to, because all our infrastructure, all our archives and everything is there. Um, yes, so uh, it was a success by, by that fact. Uh, we, we, uh, uh, the, the, we increased the, the, the number of viewers in, I don't know, even the factor, because it was more than three million. One million of which in China, uh, so 3.4 million uh, viewers. And um, so it increased by a factor 100 or more. Um, but of course, I mean, we are not, uh, uh, never, never ever would we have said that this experience replaces the life experience in the house. But as for, as, as for other uh, venues, not only opera houses, um, you have to be a little bit careful because uh, it's, it, there are so many people out there who just can't come. Uh, or just can't enjoy the life experience because they are too far away, because it's costly, because they are too old or too young, because they don't have a babysitter, because they have a broken leg or whatever. So, um, uh, of course, it's not saying watch a stream and you have the same experience. But um, it's, in, and in our case, many, many people watch the streams that came to the opera in person, maybe once per, uh, per season or twice per season. Because if, if you come to the opera, also to a club, I mean, it's, you know, it's not for nothing. So many people have really to think about how often do I go there. And then it's a nice thing to, 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 have, this, to have this streaming. Uh, now when, uh, we, we were talking a little bit also because that was your original question, I think, or was it at least contained in this original question. It's what now? 
uh, after that period. And it's so funny because in many, many other fields, uh, we are more afraid of going back to the previous normal, um, be it traveling, be it uh, many other aspects of life. Um, it was really a, a, a shock, a very healthy shock, uh, demonstrating that many, many aspects of life can work also a little bit differently. Like just buying, 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 buying stuff that nobody needs. Uh, all the shops were closed, money was uh, scarce, uh, and, and it works. I mean, life goes on. And here, I, I, when, you, when I hear you talk, I thought, um, what about our industry, so to speak? What about our field of, of music, live music, whatever genre? Do we want to go back to this normal? Let me just say one word, uh, what, what I mean, like Salzburg Festival. They did it. It was cool that they did it. I, I think it, they, they were really, it was a powerful signal that they did it. But they did it for a completely different audience. It was not only less people, it was different people. Because all those people that normally would go there, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm happy with all those people. It's not that I'm, that I'm, that I'm uh, blaming anybody, but it's rich, uh, German, Swiss, uh, uh, industrials or whatever. You know? it's, it's, it's this kind of public that everybody, we always say, really, is it that what we want? Um, high-end music production, be it in what genre or whatever, for this kind of public? Or is it cool that now it changed Totally, there was, uh, the, the, the ticket prices were far lower. It was the regional and local people who came. It was many young people who had the uh, opportunity to, uh, to come. So shall we go back to this previous normal? Shall Vienna State Opera go back to this previous normal? Shall the, and also the, 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 the live in clubs, or also the, the broadcasting industry, I mean, remember, it's, it's only seven, seven months ago that we had all those discussions. Uh, how shall we change it, will we change it, uh, how shall we develop it? So this is for me a, an important question. Now taking this opportunity to reflect, um, uh, this opportunity that stopped us uh, and, and that really forced us to, 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 look about, to look into that in a different manner maybe. Thank you for this, for this input. Um, uh, that's the, the, the last thing you said about Salzburg Festival. It's very interesting because of, of a friend of mine I know, he's a student, like in the early 20s, and he just told me three weeks ago, he spontaneously went to Salzburg to see the Salzburg, which would never happen. But uh, now back to your initial statement. I mean, this is a benefit for some people. And you said previously you didn't uh, visit the, off, uh, the opera because that doesn't interest you. So. Is it now better uh, or, or not to stay in this or <laughs> what? Well, no, I, I mean, the, 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 the purpose and the benefit we can get from this is very different. And that's the important point. Um, I, honestly, I, now when I reflected, I saw two streams. And it's very interesting what I. Be, one was from the Metropolitan Opera, this five hours tour de force through the whole world, where they filmed um, singers at their home places in very different. Uh, conditions, so some were singing in their garden, some were singing on very strange places. And, and this lived very much from, from a, different, uh, a different approach. Quality was not an issue there so much, and nevertheless it became much more lively. People became, because you were in their, in, their, in their apartments, you were there where they are living, and this was, I found it very, very inspiring. And Thomas Lausmann was doing that, in fact, because we were talking about Thomas. Um, for, yeah. the, for the Metropolitan. Um, and uh, I think th this is, for instance, one way uh, you could get people closer even to, to this, to this, to this uh, type of music production. And I think that's the important thing which we could try to use to make people much more aware that it's not that far away and they can Maybe even do it th themselves if you go away from... If I found it very interesting, the studio remark. Because, in fact, I, I think, are we not overhyping this quality issue instead of just trying to bring people close to the fact of making music, of what making music is at, is, is at all? It's, uh, 
So, so uh, what, what, I'm, what, I'm, what I'm taking from, from Christopher's remark is more that we can use the situation as a sort of an educational tool to replace uh, what has been traditional music, Unterricht, how do you say, education, uh, in such a situation and change, change the general approach of, of normal people to different types of music. And, and if Salzburg is, uh, it didn't follow it so closely, but if the public was so different, oh, yeah. that's, that's, that's an extremely good sign. It will be the same thing here in Staatsoper, I think. I was told uh, that also there are very different people, no tourists, and uh, nevertheless the enthusiasm is there since, since it has op reopened two days ago. And, and I think that's really, it's really a crisis situation where we could try to, to, to reflect on, on this sort of extreme approach we, 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 we followed for quite some time. I would like to, to add here maybe that um, in the field of experimental music and also of club music, I guess, uh, I think there is also a risk uh, because uh, there are a lot of artists, I mean, people already do film in the last uh, couple of decades or years or maybe decade one or two uh, at shows and then put everything up on, the, on YouTube. And it also, you can also get a wrong impression of a performance, you know, because you then watch on YouTube, uh -huh, what is this and this musician doing? And it simply doesn't give you the experience. So I know that a lot of uh, musicians are actually not happy that like excerpts of their performances show up on YouTube because it's, yeah, it's, it's not the experience you would get if you would see them live. And I think especially in uh, also, well, in club music, but also in, in experimental music, um, I don't think that you can really uh, t transport the whole experience via any kind of media, you know? I mean, also in the radio it's maybe difficult, but there you have the possibility to contextualize it because usually we do interviews with the musicians, there is an introduction. Um, also, I think there the, uh, the quality of the recording is like super, super, super important because the, uh, the less, maybe not so much of my moderation, but I think also of my moderation because it's just simply uh, better to listen to if it's like, it, if it has a good quality. But uh, if it comes to the music, you know, um, like a shabby recording of, of something, um, yeah, it just, it just takes so much from the, from the art piece. Uh, so I think, I think it's, it's very interesting what, what you said uh, about that there is, was a different kind of people going to the Salzburger Festspiele. So I think that's great and definitely they should um, think about that, how to, to include those people in future editions. But uh, yeah, with like, with like the streaming, um, I, I also see risks there. So, so what, what is your concern about the, uh, what Susanna said about the snippets of music and quality probably and, and performing? Um, well, first of all, I don't think anyone considers uh, streaming a valid replacement of, of the live concert experience. So it can only be something uh, that temporarily attempts to replace a certain experience that people already know and therefore can somehow recall and reconstruct in, in, in their minds. Um, but what it can be is like, a, an additional uh, form of communicating and um, experience. So when it comes to snippets uh, online, I don't know, I think this decontextualization happens all the time and uh, we live with it. Uh, it. It's similar to, I don't know, quoting somebody out of context and it just happens. So. Um, I rather I would rather see the positive sides that if somebody like uploads a snippet of my concert, uh, then it uh, yeah <laughs> I mean it rather uh, means that that person thinks it's interesting enough to be uploaded. So um, not appearing on YouTube is is more kind of a 
I don't know, uh, a devastating <laughs> fact. Uh, on the other hand, the, the quality of sound, yeah, that's, that's a huge topic. I mean, listening to, to bass music on laptop speakers is simply not listening to bass music. Um, you need to have like the, the uh, in order for the uh, bass waveforms to transmit, you need physical space and you need the right speakers for electronic music in particular. Uh, and uh, that's, that's a physical experience of music that uh, also needs a certain kind of volume and it's different from from hearing it on small speakers and low volume. Um, so that's one part, one aspect that is totally missing if you, if you do not open concert spaces and clubs. Uh, yeah, I think it's a very important part. And the other aspect is how do I move to the music? And I think consuming uh, music uh, with my body moving is a whole other thing than consuming music while you're seated and kind of fixed in your position. Even for concert music, it would probably feel different, especially, let's say, if it's, if it's like a surround sound thing. Uh, it would be a very different experience if people could move around and and react with the whole body to uh, what they are listening to. So that's another level of experience that gets completely, uh, that is completely like dismissed in an in a online streaming thing. But um, yeah. You're, you're far more free to move at home than in, a, in, in, any, in any venue. Uh, if it's not a club, of course. But, but also, also there you can make, put on your, your earphones and off you go. I yeah, mean, but you, you no. don't move within the sound, but the sound stays the same. Uh, yeah. And that, that is what I mean. Good, but, but okay, but, but uh, people normally can't go to a club every day. And they listen to music all the time. Uh, and if they wouldn't, uh, the music industry would collapse from one day to the other. If, it's, if, it, if it were only rely, relying on, on, on live performances, the, it, it wouldn't exist. I mean, it, the, whole, the whole industry wouldn't exist, COVID or non-COVID. So, and as soon as you have a recording, um, that's it. I mean, then, then yes. you are not in a club and you are not with people and you have uh, certainly not normally, this, most people don't have bass speakers like like you know giving you this yeah. experience the the club experience yeah this is why you go to venues yeah also uh this is why i go to the to the state opera yeah, because of it course. sounds uh, yes of course but, the, but, the, but this whole industry wouldn't exist if there were no recordings and if if there were no broadcast and if there were no no streamings and nothing i mean it's, if it were only the, the venues then then we, we we wouldn't be here to talk even we would maybe uh, sit in the vienna state opera or in a club but not yeah. here. No but, doubt, no yeah. doubt about that. But that's not what I was trying uh, to yeah. point no, out. No, no, I, I understand. But but still, I, I just want to uh, to argue uh, that also these other ways of uh, experiencing music, be it whatever genre it is, they have their own right, so to speak. And if they hadn't, uh, we would have a huge problem. Um, but they have. So um, my kids, uh, I, I at home, it's it's a bit. Funny, and, and now it's a little bit more complicated because I'm working at home now, so the kids are not sure at this moment whether it's good or bad, <laughs> whether the, the, the advantages uh, are more than the disadvantages. It, uh, we never ever, we don't have a, a TV set, and we don't have speakers, and we, don't, we never ever uh, listen to any kind of music at home uh, because I am, the, I think, the most radical uh, defender of your uh, position. So I say, if you listen to music, we go there. So we go to a concert, be it whatever genre it is, be it a jazz, be it in the Porgy and Bass, or be it in the arena or whatever with the kids, or, or to, a, to a classical music concert. So we go there and listen to it, because I, for me, it's, I'm really com totally radical and say, uh, for, for me, it doesn't exist if not, uh, if it's performed. Um, and now the kids normally, where I was not at home often, 
So they had their free time and they did what they wanted. And I'm always sitting around. <laughs> it's a little bit weird for them. Um, but they, of course, they are listening to music all the time. Um, for me, I think uh, what, what a good... This, this situation also sheds a new light on the necessity of developing new business models for, for, this, for, this, for this changed now changed way of, of uh, music making, music producing, music enjoying for quite a while. I mean, I really can't imagine that we go back to this previous normal before a year's time. And, and, and this gives us the opportunity of rethinking also the business models behind. And people are doing it already. Labels are doing it, music publishers are doing it, venues have to do it, and uh, the society as a whole has to do it, has to reflect this, uh, the, the, the positioning of music, music cities. Uh, what, what are the responsibilities of a federal government, of a regional government, of a local government to keep that alive? So it's all, uh, all of a sudden we, we, we have to rethink uh, this whole thing because, the, because the, the, the standard traditional ways just don't work anymore. Thank you very much. Uh, we are almost, uh, uh, the time is almost over actually, so we're already talking more than 40 minutes. We just minutes. started. So uh, time, time is running uh, very fast when, when we're talking, so I think that's, that's a good sign. Uh, let's, let's do one, one last statement, because I think that, that was a key word, a new, uh, let's say, business models or new ideas. Um, that uh, Maybe you can, you can just think for a second uh, from your own perspective, whether it's composer, producer, consumer, what in five years from now or ten years from now, what uh, what do we need? What do you want or what do you think could happen? Uh, I mean, we all hope that everything is going back to normal, but uh, in terms of, of music producing or consuming, what do you think in, in two or three sentences uh, could be in five years or ten years? What do you want? I mean, the, the most important thing will really be, as I'm mean, following Christopher fully there, um, to understand the value of culture for the society in general. And this is something which has become very obvious in this, in this crisis. Um, that uh, I think it was Churchill who, who, who once uh, said, as somebody wanted to close down culture during the Second World War, saying, no, that's what we are fighting about, actually during the war. Uh, and this, this impressed me very much. So I think the, the big opportunity now is really to understand how important this, all this type of things is for, for, this, for a society at all. And, and I see a danger that we are really losing that, given, given uh, the fact that the late reaction of governments concerning financial problems of artists and, 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 and all this, these developments. But this is what we probably learned because now we are missing it. And this becomes very obvious from this podium as well. We are just missing this, exper this, this experience and, and we have to sort of bind the two, all these two things together. May I refine uh, the question for you? What would you change as an artist now in the next five years to make to, 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 that not this happens, basically, or that... <laughs> uh, what uh, do that, you think? That's a broad question. Uh, one thing is that... Um, it would be great uh, if we could turn from neoliberal um, um, ways how the, how the scene works towards a more sustainable uh, community that um, that enables unpopular things or unpopular art that can develop over time. And uh, I'm a little bit afraid that probably when there is a, a vaccination for COVID-19, things will go back to kind of normal like they were before, but in a, in a narrower way because people who go out and who would pay for uh, such an event or a service or a record, they have less money, they will have less money in the next years, I think, and therefore uh, the market might become narrower and, and, and smaller and, 
uh, even even more like uh, pointed towards the anyway successful products and artists being a product rather than than a personality who creates something in a certain context. So uh, if we can develop um, things like uh, decentralized uh, ownership in communities um, with maybe with, with uh, the help of uh, technological developments, that will be an uh, interesting, interesting thing to happen. And on the other hand, we must not forget that um, clubs in particular are safer spaces for people who are otherwise in danger in, in the society because uh, they do not uh, fulfill like the general norms and they can be who they actually are rather in these physical spaces than outside. So um, matters of inclusion and uh, diversity are obviously very important to me and I hope in five years uh, we will be uh, much better at that. Uh, and of course also matters of um, um, you know, um, sustainability in an ecological sense. So that also reflects, I think, on, on, on the whole concert circus and artists flying across the globe all the time. So that is another good aspect that this kind of stopped now and we might find different ways to deal with that. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. How do you think journalism <laughs> or broadcasting can change, should change, will change? Actually, I don't think that there is a need for it to be changed so much. I mean, what was great, and but what we actually already did before is that um, now that more and more people have the possibility to record themselves in a quality like the interviews, especially if it's in English and you anyways have to overvoice it in German, um, so more and more people have the possibility to do that. So I interview them over Skype and they record themselves at the same time and then send me back the recording. So a couple of years ago, this wasn't possible. This is uh, becoming easier and easier. So this, of course, um, if I remember like 20 years ago, I had to wait until they were traveling to Vienna so that I could meet them and, and uh, make a broadcast about them. So. So that's definitely a, a good thing. Um, and uh, I had to think about a colleague of mine who is working in Pittsburgh, and I also interviewed her for, because I'm involved in, the, in this festival network, ICUS, the International Cities of Advanced Sound, and one of our colleagues, she is running an event in Pittsburgh. And for a radio show, we interviewed her. Um, and she told us about curating an online DJ night, uh, which went on for many, many hours. And she said that uh, for her, like the fact that she couldn't do it in Pittsburgh and had, uh, and, and, and if she would have done it in Pittsburgh, then of course the first question would be, how much budget do I have? Whom can I all fly in? Um, and like this freed her completely. Uh, and she, she was much more open in thinking whom to include into this uh, broadcast. And, that's also about diversity or connects to this theme of diversity because um, I think what could be interesting, uh, well, what will definitely be interesting and, and should be done more is to, uh, to connect also to the so-called periphery. Uh, is it in, I don't know, some countries in Africa or, or wherever? So, so like to include these artists or if, yeah, through that, like this online situation, um, Maybe there is like more possibility for artists from those regions also to be included in events, to be presented uh, if things go digital to a certain extent. I mean, def still, I don't think that uh, that uh, it can. Um, uh, like, I still think that the life experience is enormously important, and I also. Uh, can say that in the field of new and experimental music, not everything can be recorded, not everything can be presented via recording. Like there are really lots of things, also if you think about sound art, they can only be presented 
and and be experienced through through the the life experience through going there. So this is definitely also super super important that we can go back to that. But yeah, besides that, like maybe the most most um, the most interesting uh, development for me would be in this like including scenes and people from like very far away places of the world into like this global stream of, of music. Thank you. What is your, maybe, maybe uh, I forgot to mention that uh, because you, uh, your contract at State Opera ended and you started to work at a new company mm -hmm. uh, called Music, which uh, deals with digital music scores, I think, yes. Uh, maybe either from this perspective or, you, or any other you want, what, what's your point? I think that it, it will change a lot. Uh, music distribution, music making, uh, uh, music performing will change a lot. It's, it's, uh, and, and it will change to the better, I think, because it will make, uh, we, will, we will appreciate far more the specific qualities of the specific uh, ways of enjoying, experiencing, locations. So uh, uh, a little bit like, like, I mean, every one of us, uh, we had to, to have lots and lots of online meetings now. Uh, and it turned out that for many, many, in many, many frameworks and circumstances, there's no problem at all. Uh, we, before, me at least, I mean, I don't know what, what's, what, what holds for you or you in the public, I was traveling, uh, all the time, and I was sitting in me traveling to Paris or to Berlin or to wherever, sitting in eight hours in a meeting in a lightless meeting room uh, to discuss stupid questions that that could easily also be discussed online or done online or experienced online or whatever and now we really appreciate that that uh, we, we we would never ever travel again for such a thing. It, you go there for quality time. You go there to meet people, to see them, and not to lose the, your time in meeting rooms. And and this, I think, this will also happen in in arts. Like uh, we will appreciate more the scarcer moments where we really go there and where we really uh, have it live. Um, this will be, I think, a positive a positive development. And what will develop a lot, hugely is education, online education, distant learning, connecting people, um, not only in COVID or past COVID, because we learned that a lot of things can happen, can happen uh, without being in one room. And this liberates 90% of the world. Here, we live in a, in a paradise, you know, with two music universities in one small town. Uh, we have free opera houses, we have clubs galore in Berlin or wherever, but the world is not only Berlin or Vienna. It's huge, and for many, many people all over the world, this boost of digital opportunities, of new platforms, of new ways of connecting, will uh, be a, a liberation and will, will open up opportunities. Like you said, bringing in the, the African musicians into these festival um, frameworks. Uh, but that holds also for all education, for any kind of performance, for everything. So that, that will change a lot and it will change to the better. Thank you very much. That was, that was, but that were good last words, I would say. Um, and time is over as well. So I, first of all, I want to thank you all, all four, for your expertise, for your coming here, despite all uh, mobility restrictions we have. Um, no restrictions on the bike. <laughs> That's true. And um, speaking of, of, of chances uh, earlier, at the example of the Salzburger Festspiele, I didn't know, uh, I didn't expect that I will have the chance, not I, the whole team, we are what, what, what works here on this project, that we will host the only live concert of the Waves Festival 2020. This will be a hybrid live concert because it will happen tomorrow evening uh, at 6.30. Uh, the live part will be online and offline. So uh, the offline part, like the physical part, is at the University of Vienna. And the online part is wherever everybody is. And we all will do music together. Uh, so uh, it, it's also some sort of experiment. Uh, we'll see how that goes. And 
if that wouldn't be enough, uh, that's the peak of the music hack day, which will happen full day on Saturday. So we will also experience new forms of music, uh, which we talked about as well today. So, um, and we have still two or three spots left. So if everybody here or outside in the world, <laughs> maybe not in the world, but in the Viennese world, wants to join us, uh, you can still uh, register. We left it open for a last minute registration. So we start tomorrow evening and Saturday full day. So if you want to experience new music and do some music hacking, you're more than welcome to join. And everybody else can join us online uh, for the hybrid live concert of the Waves Festival 2020. Thank you very much uh, for listening and attending the panel discussion. Thanks again to our four experts and uh, I wish you all a nice Waves conference and Waves Festival 2020.